Hello and welcome to Web Dorado video channel. After watching the video, I would kindly ask you to share your thoughts in a comment section below. Also, you can send an email with your questions to info at web-dorado.com. Today, we will explore Responsive Contact Form Builder from Web Dorado. In this video, we will install our Contact Form Builder. We will select one of many ready forms and we will look into its options. After that, we will publish our contact form on a page or a post. Let's get started. We're going to click on the login button at the administrator panel to log in. Then we will navigate to our plugins and click on add new. After which we will click on upload plugin and we'll choose our file, select it from our downloads contact form builder and click on the install button. If you are a Mac user, please go to your downloads folder, locate the plugin, right click on it and select compress. You will have a newly created file which can be installed as described here. At this point, I'm going to click on activate plugin. Seconds later, the plugin will appear in my plugins list. And then I will navigate to my form builder and click on the manager. At the manager screen here, there are 10 ready forms for use. Let's select one of them and start exploring. I will select contact form number one. Please also note that you have a short code that you can add to your page or a post and you also have a PHP function which you can insert into your code. You also have a preview button here which lets you see how the form looks. And also you have edit and delete buttons. Let's go ahead and click the edit button and we'll start from here. I'm going to give it a title, product support inquiry, assuming I am a software developer. The first thing I see here is enable drag and drop. If we have this selected, we can drag and drop our fields to desired location. Let me demonstrate that. For example, I want my details field to be right down here under contact us. And also there's a small questionnaire field that I can bring down here right and put it right under details. Probably my map, if I am going to use it, will need to be right before my submit button right here. Now, if I want to edit any one field, I will double click on the field and I can go ahead and edit. If I unselect enable drag and drop, then I have buttons right, left, up, down, and I also have the edit button, which I can also choose to select and edit my particular field. I'm going to cancel this, select enable drag and drop, and I can go ahead and start with my very first field and I will double click to edit the field. So the first one here is your text field. Here you can enter your text or modify the existing one. In a text tab here, you can change your font type, size and whatnot else by editing the HTML code. I will cancel out of here because I'm not going to do anything with it. Let's go to our details field. Any given field can be unselected from here if you don't want it to be visible in your form. Field label is your text input field. Field label size is at 100 currently. I will leave it at that. Field label position, you have left or top if you pay attention here. Field size, it's the size of the text that your viewer will type in. In the value if empty section, you can have certain text displayed when the field is empty. For example, you can say something like type your question here. And of course, the minute they click on the box, that will disappear and your viewer will type their question. Class name parameter is for specifying the CSS class of the field. It is located in the theme section under general options tab of form options and we will get to form options a bit later. With the required field, you choose whether the field is going to be required or not. The minute you select it, a red asterisk appears next to that particular field that you have selected to be a required field. Allow only unique values. We choose if the submitted value of the field has to be unique for each submission. In other words, the same value cannot be entered again after it has been submitted already. And then we have additional attributes. Now this is for customizing specific properties of the field. You can add custom attribute to HTML tag. For example, 
I will give this a max length and I will give it a value of let's say 100 characters. I will click on the save button and I will save this particular field. Let's move on to our questionnaire field here. I'm going to double click on that of course and I have certain questions here. I can add or delete any one of them. I can change my field label size, the position, relative position also is available here besides the label position, I can have it displayed either vertically or horizontally. I also can have more than one rows if I choose to. Randomize in front end. Now randomization is an important research technique used to help overcome the bias that can result from the order in which items are presented. I will select this option. Allow other, I don't need to select that because in my options here I already do have that selected. I'm going to select save here, click save here and uh, we will move on to our next field which happens to be our name field. I'll double click on that. In value if empty you can provide the acceptable form for entering a name. You may as well select extended format for your name and you can edit the labels here by simply clicking on them. I'm going to select the normal format and I will leave it at that. I will click on the save button to save this field as well. Now email, phone, mobile, company and subject fields have similar options. Hence I will not talk about them. Rather I will tell you that there are many fields here that you can select or unselect depending on your needs. Okay. I will definitely select the map. But before that, let's talk about send copy of this message to yourself. Let me double click on that. Now, if you'd like your viewer to receive a copy of this message in his or her email, you need to select the checkbox right here. And do not forget to fill in user email section in email option tab of form options. I will click on the save button here. I will save that and we'll talk about simple capture field. Now a simple capture field automatically generates a set of numbers and letters. You can specify a number between 3 and 9 right here. Let's say I will delete this and I will add 9 to this number. Go ahead and save it if you like it that way. Okay, there is also a recapture field right down here, which is an alternative option that uses public and private keys. Now you need to create recapture keys at www.google.com forward slash recapture. Then you will enter those keys accordingly right here in private key and public key sections. You can also choose a theme here, red, white, black glass and clean. Let's talk about the map. Okay, so I will enable the field because I want my company to actually show on the map. I can change the size of this map to my liking. I can also add another location if I have more than one location. Let's say it's somewhere right here. Okay, as you noticed, the second I give it a different location, longitude and latitude change automatically. In a marker info, you will specify your company's name. So the minute someone clicks on that marker, it will, as a matter of fact, display your company information. All right, so I think this is how I like it. I'm going to go ahead and save my map as well. As I said, there are fields here that you can choose to have on your form, select them and edit them to your specific needs. For example, if you like to display your company information, you can also select this and provide your company information here and click save, of course. All right. My form is ready, I believe, and I'm going to click on the apply button to save the changes. Well, right now, let's go ahead and talk about the form options. I will click on the form options button on the right corner. And what I have is three tabs here, general options, email options, actions after submission. The first thing I have in general options is published. Decide whether to publish your form or leave as a draft. Save data to database. Select yes to save your data to your database or select no and submissions will be sent to admin's email address and for that you will need to specify your email address in the email options tab. Theme section here, we have large number of themes 
available. You can select any which one and you can click preview button to preview the theme. Also, you can make changes in the CSS of the theme with the CSS button right here. In required field mark section, you may customize the default asterisk symbol with something else if you'd like. Okay, let's move on to our email options here. This is our email to administrator section and then we're going to have email to user section. Now in mailer option, you can choose whether to have a WP mail or PHP mail function. Email to send submissions to. Here you provide email to which submitted form information is sent. If you need more than one email address, you must separate them by commas. Email from. Here you can specify the email address from which the administrator receives the submission email, sender's mail. So if you have an email address field in your form, you can use this user submitted email address right here. Reply to if different from email form. Specify an alternative email address to which the administrator will be able to reply upon receiving the submitted form. Custom text in email for administrator. Here you can add custom text, images and custom HTML to the email message that is sent to the administrator as well as choose which of the submitted forms should be included in the email. It is set to all by default. Now I'm moving on to email to user. In sent to you will select the email field in the form to send out the email to. Email from you specify the email address from which the users receive the submission email. From name. Here you specify the sender's name which is shown in submission email. You can also select a field to be displayed as sender's name using the plus button here. For example, submitter's name field. Reply to if different from email from. You can specify the email address the user can reply to. And again, we have the custom text in email for user here section to add custom text, images and HTML to your emails. Okay, let's scroll up and look at actions after submission. Now, after the form has been submitted, your viewers can stay on the form, can go to a specific post, to a specific page that you select from the list to a custom text and a URL for example if you were to provide a URL. I will leave it at custom text and surely I can edit this custom text to whichever way I would like to have it presented at the end of the form. Okay I will click on the apply and save this. Now that I have saved it I probably need to put it on my page or a post. I will go to my pages I will go to my contact page and I will either copy and paste that short code that I was talking about or I will simply click on insert contact form and select my form and that's my product support inquiry. I will click on the insert button and it's right there. So I'm going to click on update to save and I should be able to see that on my contact form if I were to refresh it contact page I apologize okay sure I do see my form looks great it's exactly how I wanted it and now I would like to talk to you about submissions and blocking IP so I'm gonna go to my contact form builder I'm gonna click on submissions here in entries section here you can see the number of submitted forms in views the number of times the form has been viewed and conversion rate, the percentage of submitted forms to the overall number of views. For the forms that contain checkboxes or radio buttons, a separate statistics is available. It shows how many times a particular checkbox radio button has been checked and what is the ratio of that number to the overall number of checks. Simply select a field and click show to see. Now let's go ahead and select the field and I'm going to click on the show button and it will show me that particular information here. You also have the possibility to search the submissions database by all the relevant fields of the given form. 
Submissions can be sorted by any of the fields of the form by clicking the labels. You can delete any of the submissions by selecting them and clicking on the delete button. You can also add remove any columns of the submissions by clicking on add remove columns button here. What we have next on our menu here is block IPs, though we do have them here as well, but let me go ahead and click on the menu. You can specify a certain IP address and click on add IP and save to block it. And then later on, if you want to unblock a certain IP, you can definitely unblock it from here as well as from the submissions section here that we have spoken about. All right. So now we have completed our form with great success. I surely hope you like our videos and if so, please click and like this video below and hit the red subscribe button down below and follow us on social networks. I thank you very much for your attention and I wish you a great day.